Here we have another example of two masses connected through a series of springs and dampers. Let's start with the free body diagram of masses M1 and M2. For mass M1, we have three forces acting on it. The first force is the force due to the spring that connects M1 and M2. If the system moves to the right, then the spring is pulling on mass M1. And the magnitude of the force that it applies to mass M1 is proportional to the displacement of that spring. So K2, the stiffness of the spring, times the displacement of mass M2, call that X2, minus the displacement of mass M1, let's call that X1. So X2 minus X1. Mass M1 is connected through uh, a spring and a damper to a fixed reference frame. They both apply forces now to the mass as it moves to the right. Those forces will be pointing to the left. The force due to the spring is K1 X1, displacement of the spring times the stiffness of that spring. And the force due to the damper is simply the coefficient of viscous friction of that damper B times the velocity or the speed of that of displacement of mass M1, that is X1 dot. For mass M2, we can note that the spring that is connected to mass M1 and M2 applies this force to mass M1, and therefore it must apply the same force to M2 but in the opposite direction. And here we have the magnitude. The magnitude is exactly the same. It's K2 times X2 minus X1. What else we have acting on mass M2? Something different that we see in this exercise is that, that, is that there is a coefficient of viscous friction between mass M2 and the plane on which mass M2 is light. We can consider that as friction between mass M2 and the plane. So as M mass M2 moves or, or uh, moves to the right, that friction will create a force acting on the mass that points to the left, that resists motion. Friction will resist motion of mass M2. And what is the magnitude of that force? Well, the magnitude of that force is the coefficient of viscous friction between mass M2 and the plane times the speed of mass M2, so X2 dot. Notice that this damper is not, uh, the, the force applied by this damper doesn't depend on the speed of mass M1 because it's not a damper that connects both masses. It, this B now represents the viscous friction between mass M2 and the plane, which means that the force that this friction exerts on mass M2 only depends on the velocity of M2. There is now another force applied to mass M2 because of that, stiff, that is spring K3. We have a force applied here, and that force is K3 times the relative displacement of the spring. We see now on one end we have X, the displacement of one end of the spring, and on the other end we have X2, which is a displacement of mass M2. So the total displacement of the spring is X minus X2. You see, X is the input to the system. It's a displacement. Uh, it's not a force. We cannot apply a force to a spring. The spring in this case is a ideal, a ideal spring that doesn't have any mass. We cannot apply a force to something that doesn't have a mass. We, could only, we can only apply forces to M2 and M1. To a spring, we can apply a displacement on one end of that spring. In this case, it's X, and the displacement of the other end is X2. Hence, the force that this spring applies to the mass is K3 times X minus X2. Now that we have both free body diagrams, we can go ahead and write the equations. For mass M1, 
we'll have k2 x2 minus x1 minus b x1 dot minus k1 x1 equals to m1 x1 double dot and for mass 2 we have k3 x minus x2 minus b x2 dot coefficient of viscous friction between the mass and the plane and minus k2 x2 minus x1 and this equals to m2 x2 double dot these are the equations but now we could go ahead and replace one of the variables just just for fun we can instead of using x2 for mass uh, mass m2 let's express everything as a function of the acceleration of mass m2 so that is a2 so now we have the equations let's just do the second equation here we want this equation as a function of the acceleration of mass m2 and the displacement of mass m1 how would that work well this becomes this is still k3 x doesn't change now here we have displacement x2 but we now need to write the displacement as a function of acceleration what is the relation there well if we integrate the acceleration twice we get the displacement so minus the integral of the integral of a2 dt dt the double integral of the acceleration minus b x2 dot so this is the speed of mass m2 the relation between the speed and the acceleration is again one integration so minus the integral of a2 dt minus k2 integral of a in double integral of a2 dt minus x1 and this is equal to m2 times acceleration x2 double dot and we call that a2 and this is a alternative way to write the same equation again just in case we are interested in the acceleration directly of mass m2 not on the displacement